Hello everyone, welcome to Modeling with the Mats. Today on this channel, part two of the 71 CUDA build. And today we will be focusing on the first step in the instructions, which is engine assembly. So without further ado, I'm gonna lower the camera down to the table and we're gonna get right on. All right, first we take out the instructions here. Flip over to page one of the assembly and we see the engine and section of the build fairly common in all car models to start with the engine I'll lower the camera down a little bit more there we go now we shall find all the engine parts snip them off do what we can I see on this sprue here we have the accessory drive pulleys and belt and distributor and slash distributor cap so we're definitely gonna need those get the instructions out of the way for a second and for cutting off sprue apart from the sprue I use my snippy snips they are uh, jewelers side cutters got them at Walmart fairly easy to find if you have a Walmart that has a decent craft section and we'll just cut it right off there part one and part two that's all the engine parts on that one here we have the front cover uh intake definitely gonna need those and also oh, there's the fan gonna need the fan the instructions do say numbers associated with the parts so if you don't know the engine parts as good as i do there's also the exhaust manifolds here that we're going to cut off they're numbered so if i say you need part one you'll look on all the screws find part one blah 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 blah, etc etc do it that way but me being a car model builder i know what the engine parts are and i'll know what they look like on the sprue it also helps that i work on cars for a living so definitely experienced in this kind of stuff here's the engine block and transmission on this one here I'm gonna cut those off because those are quite important parts of the engine build and there's cylinder heads over here I'll do those and after we cut all them off we'll sand them down I believe one thing left are let's see let's take a look the only thing I haven't cut off yet are the valve covers, which are usually chrome, and the alternator, which are sometimes chrome, sometimes not. In this case, they are chrome, and the carburetors are also chrome, so it should all be on this guy. Let's just rip open the little plastic baggies, because I'm an animal. Alright, right there is probably good. Alright, snip off the valve covers. Nope, that one's already broken off. So, got one, two. There's an alternator here. Come on, there we go. And we got two four barrel carburetors for the 426 Hemi engine. Now, four barrel, two barrel. The, what that means is that there's four ports for fuel to go into they call them barrels so that being said these here are the engine assembly pieces all laid out nice and neatly not a lot of pieces which is good because if you're building cars simplicity well, any kind of model simplicity is key so there you have it all the parts now what we'll do i will sand all these down and uh we'll glue the engine block together as is uh, as an assembly and then we'll put the cylinder heads on it as an assembly and i believe the intake too but i will have to google pictures of the 426 hemi to make sure that the intake intake heads and engine block are all painted the same color along with the front cover too and then the exhaust manifolds, those are going to be painted a steel color. 
So those will be painted separately. The fly, not the flywheel, the engine cooling fan, an accessory drive, and I, well, I'll have to Google the distributor too, but those two pieces, the fan and the accessory driving belts will be painted like a semi-gloss black or flat black or even a rubber, a belt, I would do a rubber black, but I don't have any rubber black at the moment. Alternator will leave chrome and the carburetors and, and valve covers will, use, will leave chrome as well. So yeah, that's basically what's going to happen. I will fast speed up the video while I'm sanding because it is a tedious and kind of boring process. So uh, I will show you the sander that I'm going, the sander I'm going to use to do all of this. It is a Flory sander, the specifically the green one is my favorite. So we'll use that, and yeah, uh, enjoy the fast sped up stuff. Okay. Okay. In this kit here, this little piece is not supposed to be there. It does tell you to cut it off, so we will do that. Sometimes they tell you to cut stuff off. This, this is one of those times. All right, with sanding chrome parts, there is, you know, when you sand this, you're gonna lose the chrome. But we'll show you what we do about that here in a second after I sand this down. All the little edges that the that it was attached to the sprue, it'll turn white like bare plastic. And I have a marker here that will fix that uh, white spot and in chrome inconsistency. So, I'll demonstrate on this one now. I bought these off of Amazon. It came in a three pack. I only used two of them, but they are chrome pens, uh, markers, pens, whatever. I use these on for stuff like this. It's basically a Sharpie that's chrome ink. And if you can see, I don't know if you can or not, but the bare edge of this plastic piece is. Uh, white from where I sanded it and I'll take this marker and go over where I sanded it and you can't tell where I was sanding on it which is nice I've done fairly big spots with this marker and I use it later on for window trim that we will get to as the video series progresses but yeah they are chrome paint marker by fly C Amazon, I think the three pack of these ran about $20. But yeah, on to the sanding, more sanding. All right, the uh, sanding is done. First thing we're gonna do, take the engine block and transmission halves, glue them together. Then we'll let it dry. Uh, no, we, won't. we will do that together. Then we'll glue this head on there and glue the other head on there. And the front cover, we'll glue that and glue that on there too. And then once that dries, we will sand the seam out of the bottom of the engine and transmission as best as we can it's never going to be perfect and we'll do the same thing to the top here sorry about that folks uh the camera stopped recording and i didn't notice so only thing you missed uh, is we glued the engine and transmission halves together and then i glued the cylinder heads on top of that because it's all going to be the same color and you missed uh what glue i was using i was using the tania extra thin i also have uh the regular orange cube stuff 
and the quick setting extra thin. But for what I just did, I used just this and we glued them together. And it dries really quick, so it is pretty much already ready to be sanded. But we are going to put the front cover, glue the front cover on now too. And yeah, we will do that real quick. Just brush on, nice helping of it. And this has holes and dowel pins that correspond with how it's supposed to sit in there. So you can't really put it on wrong. Sorry, I'm trying to keep everything in the frame, but it's hard to look at what you're doing. All right, now that's dry. We'll leave that there. And we will take a quick pause so I can research if the intake is indeed the same color as the rest of this uh, assembly before I decide to glue that on there. If, because if it's a separate color, I'm gonna paint it first before I glue it on there. So we'll pause for a second while I do some quick research and we'll come back. All right, uh, after my quick research, it does indeed appear that the upper intake manifold or intake manifold is the same color as the engine block. So we will go ahead and glue that on there as well. And it is also has uh, holes in it and pegs in the intake, so you can't really go wrong with installing this piece. Although it does appear to be fighting me a little bit, and I'm not sure why. It can only go on one way, one way only, so I'm trying to see why it is indeed not wanting to go. Oh, there it goes. It is a tight fit. It's just a tight fit. If it continues to fight me, because you want to test fit every part you put on before you actually glue it on. So if it continues to fight me, I may cut the pegs off of it. Because it's not like it can go anywhere else in here. So I believe I'm going to do that. Because it is still, it's a tight fit, but it's also not fitting very well. So we will modify the piece by cutting off the mounting pegs and sanding it flat. Because like I said, it, does, it goes in between the heads, so it can't really move. Even if it wanted to. Plus, glue will hold it down. So we will just annoy, uh, avoid the annoyance and glue it on. Yeah, that's already, that's already way better of a fit. And it can't move. It can kind of, it moves front to back, but once you glue it down, it's not gonna go anywhere. Uh, we will take a glance just quickly. And actually, if you look on the instructions over here, there it shows only one peg in the bottom of the intake. This one had two, so I think one of the pegs was just a molding piece that got in the way, and that's why it wasn't fitting correctly. So that being said, we will just take off some of this, put it on here, nice, nice layer of it, just because we don't want it to go anywhere. We will position it where we want it, and then we'll go back on the edges and put some more glue. Because there's nothing worse than using too little glue and then later the piece pops off after you've already done a lot of work on it you got it how you want it. All right, we will let that sit, dry, and we will sand the seams, like I said earlier, out of the top and bottom of the engine and transmission assembly. But what we can do right now is paint some stuff. And I will use my reverse locking pliers, needle or pliers, reverse locking uh, tweezers to hold a piece while I paint it. And this is an exhaust manifold, left and right. Uh, even if you cut them off, they can only go on one way on the model, so you don't really need to worry like, oh, which one's the left one, which one's the right one? It, it's easily, uh, you'll find out the hard way that it can only go on one way. That being said, we will clamp a piece in here, paint it. Uh, well, I want steel color, so I will use Model Air, not Model, yeah, Model Air Metallic Paint by Vallejo Steel Color. And we need this guy, because it is a squirt top, not an open jar like Camia paint, so you can't dip your brush in here. Shake it first. It's a nice sound. Squirt a drop or two. I usually do two drops to start with because a little goes a long way. And I'll use something out of my arsenal of tiny paint brushes. 
I will use not the tiniest one. I'll use. I'm gonna use probably this guy. And yeah, we'll just go to town. We'll just paint. Yeah, I'll probably speed this up too, so it's not as tedious to watch. All right, that one's done. I don't only have one set of these pliers right now, but I will show you the second way I do this. I will take, in this case, a screwdriver, and I'll put sticky tack, this stuff here, and I will put the glob of that on the screwdriver, and then you can hold a piece with the sticky tack. Fairly good, it's kind of jank, but you can crimp a piece in there and then you can hold it with your thumb and pour it in your finger and it won't fall out unless you're really trying to get it out of there but it should stay all right this is painted i do notice the seam line on this that i will have to sand off after I done the paint, done drying, obviously, and there's some old marks there that I didn't originally see, so we will do that. But we will also let it dry. I do need to take care of that because I want it to look a little nicer than that. So, not that you'll really see this clearly once the whole car is completed, but you'll have the personal satisfaction of knowing that. It is indeed look good everywhere all right that's done put it over here in our foam block to let dry we will clean the paintbrush because nothing else is steel colored and what we do to clean these paintbrushes this is acrylic paint you can dissolve it with isopropyl alcohol it doesn't have to be 91 proof it can be any proof it'll work i just happen to have this percentage we squirt a little bit in there. A little swishy swish. Take a rag, it's not that rag. Well, hell, we have to use this rag. Well, whatever. All right, that's clean. Next we need, uh, I'm gonna use a flat black on this stuff. And then later on we'll detail it with uh, paint markers and such but we'll do the fan distributor and the accessory drive belts belt and pulleys we'll go grab a flat black tamia flat black x1 xf1 sorry good stuff shake and this will just dip the brush in the top of the cap and we'll grab another paintbrush or something to put a piece in. Go to town. And you will have to reposition the piece to cover some stuff, but that's okay. that stuff is painted what we can do now is sand on the engine block slash transmission seams try to get rid of those and if I can get this freaking paint cap back on that would be great but it is fighting me there first clean paintbrush off all right now that we're done painting take the rag Soak up that, clean that out, clean the paint out of that cup. All right, toss it off to the side. Get the engine block. Take your sander and you just try and get rid of the seam.
it is sanded to the best that I can do. Some seam lines aren't going to go away as easily, but at the end of the day, the only thing you're really going to see on this engine once it's done is the top and partially the front end. If you were to flip it upside down, you would see part of this stuff, but uh, it's just kind of one of those where do what you want to do, and as long as you're happy, you're happy. All right, we will paint the engine portion of this now and let it dry, and then we'll paint the back half. So what we'll do, 426 Hemi is orange color. Uh, this is Tamiya X6, but I darkened it with some red because it straight out of the jar was not as dark as I wanted it to be, and 426 Hemi orange is a little like darker orange, almost a red, but not quite red. So if you want 426 Hemi orange, you have to do what I did or find a different color orange. But We'll shake it up, get another brush, and go to town on this bad boy. All right, we will dip it in the cap and start any old place. Don't really matter where you start. You just find a starting point you like and you just go for it. Now, this orange covering white is going to take more than one coat, uh, usually. Just fair warning. So, I will probably end up painting this twice if not touching it up third time after that. So, yep. This is the starter, it's not orange, so I'll paint around it. All right, it is painted the first coat. It looks like I will have to go over it once more and clean up the spots that uh, aren't gonna get coated. But the best way to store this after it's painted is kind of just to kind of prop it up as best you can with minimal uh, touching of anything. I did it like this in the edge of my uh, edge of my tackle box has a hole in it that I just hang it in there like that but that'll be all for this video hold on there that'll be all for this video as stuff has to dry and we will continue with uh, fixing some stuff on painted parts and repainting them and we'll paint the transmission and then hopefully we will glue together uh, the engine parts and be done with it hopefully probably another video's worth of stuff. But yeah, I'm Matt from Modeling with the Mats, and as always, model on.